Hi you guys, this help video is for the classifying real numbers assignment on Alex. Um, remember that as you look at your assignment, you are going to see questions that are just like this. Your numbers may be a little bit different, but it's going to be asking you to do the exact same thing. So let's just go ahead and go through a couple of these so that I can make sure that you know what you're doing. Question one, classify each number below as rational or irrational. So remember the difference between a rational number and an irrational number is that a rational number can be written as a fraction, okay? So a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. Uh, this includes terminating and repeating decimals, okay? An irrational number is any number that is a uh, never ending, never repeating decimal. Okay, irrational numbers cannot be written as fractions. So as we go through this list, square root of 36, we would say this is rational. Okay, the square root of 36 is six because six is the number that when you multiply by itself, you get to 36, okay? So square root of 36 is rational. 25.1, repeating. Okay, on this one, the point one, repeating. This is a repeating decimal. Repeating decimals are considered to be rational. I don't know why that keeps erasing up there. Okay, repeating decimals are considered rational. So rational, rational. Okay, the next one, negative 52.98. This is a terminating decimal. Terminating decimals are considered rational. Okay, so if the decimal ends or repeats, we would say it's a rational number. This number right here, negative 52.98, can be written as a fraction. It would be negative 52 and 98 hundredths. So remember to write a decimal as a fraction, you say it and then you write it. And then we could simplify this, two goes into 98 49 times, two goes into 150 times. So as a fraction, Negative 52.98 is negative 52 and 49 fiftieths. Okay, it can be written as a fraction, so we would say rational. Um, the next one, negative three times by pi. Anytime you have a number uh, right next to pi, that's implied multiplication. This is negative three times by pi. Pi is an irrational number. Remember, pi is a decimal that never repeats and never ends. So because this includes pi, we would say it is irrational. And then the next one, the square root of 14. Square root of 14 is going to be irrational, okay? There is no number that multiplies by itself to get to 14. So we would say that is an irrational number, okay? Let's look at question number two. Question number two says, check all statements that are true. So when it says check all statements that are true, that means that there may be more than one of these that is true. Okay, so since it is a terminating decimal, 4.1 is rational. True. Okay, rational numbers can be terminating decimals. Remember, terminating decimal means that it ends. 14.1, this ends. It doesn't repeat. It doesn't go on forever. It terminates. It ends. Okay, since 16 is a perfect square, square root of 16 is irrational. Now, square root of 16 would be four because four multiplied by itself gets us 16. So if the square root of 16 is four, we know that four is a rational number. Four can be written as a fraction by just putting it over one. So we're not gonna check this one. This one is not true. Okay, the next one. Since it is a ratio of two integers, seven over three is irrational. Now that is not true, okay? If a number can be written as a fraction, then we would say it is a rational number. So we're not gonna check that one either. Since it is a repeating decimal, 3.15 is rational. Okay, that one's true. Terminating decimals or repeating decimals, those are considered rational numbers. Okay, the next one. Since three is not a perfect square, square root of three is irrational. This is also true, okay? There is nothing that you can multiply by itself 
to get to 3. And when you find the square root of 3, um, you're going to see that it is a decimal that never repeats and never ends. Okay, so there were a few of these that we needed to check. Okay, let's go to the next question. Check all statements that are true. So this is just like the last one. Let's just go through these really quickly um, so I can make sure that you know which ones to check and which ones not to check. Since it is a ratio of two integers, three ninths is rational. That one would be true. Okay, remember if it's a rational number, it can be written as a fraction. Since it is a terminating decimal, 3.2 is irrational. That one is false. Okay, terminating decimals are rational numbers. The only time it's irrational if it's a never repeating, never ending decimal. Okay, the next one. Since 10 is not a perfect square, it's rational. That one is false. Okay, there's nothing that you can multiply by itself to get to 10. We would say this is an irrational number. Square root of 10 is a never ending, never repeating decimal. Okay, since 81 is a perfect square, square root of 81 is rational. And that is true, okay? 9 times 9 gets us to 81. So the square root of 81 is really just 9, and 9 is a rational number. We can write that one as a fraction by putting it over 1. Since it is an integer, 16 is irrational. False, 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 okay? All integers can be written as a fraction. To write 16 as a fraction, we would do 16 over 1. Since it can be written as a fraction, it would be rational. Okay, let's go ahead and look at one more of these. Um, since it is a repeating decimal, 14.63 is irrational. That is false. Repeating decimals are rational. Since it is a terminating decimal, 11.41 is rational. True, okay? Repeating decimals and terminating decimals are considered rational. Since it is a perfect square, since 100 is a perfect square, it's irrational. You guys, the square root of 100 is 10 because 10 multiplied by 10 gets you to 100. 10 is a rational number. It can be written as a fraction. Okay, so we also need to mark this one as true. Since 5 is not a perfect square, square root of 5 is rational. Not true. Square root of 5 would be considered irrational. There's nothing that you can multiply by itself to get to 5. Um, since it is a ratio of two integers, 11 over 8 is rational. That is also true. Okay? Remember, as you are working on your Alex assignment, if there are any of these that you need help with, please come and ask me for some help.